In this video, I just wanted to go ahead and wrap up some of the combinatorics methods that, that we've been using. And one of the challenges is always trying to decide how we count. My recommendation for the approach is always to think as intuitively about it as possible before jumping to any formula. But let's put this some of this in a nutshell. So first of all, how do we know when we multiply outcomes? The short answer here is that we do this anytime we're, we want to know the total number of groupings or, or collections of things. That's the key phrase here is, for example, I'm not just wondering, you know, how many uh, possibilities are there when I, when I roll a die. We know there are six, but I'm, I'm usually asking a question like, uh, how many different outcomes are there if I collect, uh, roll a die twice? So I'm pairing the first outcome with the second outcome, or I'm, I'm grouping the first outcome with the second outcome, or I'm collecting all the different outcomes I could have if I look at first, comma, second outcome. So uh, again, that common example is, is roll die twice, and I want to know all of the outcomes. So I, I could get a one and then a one, I could get a one and then a two, I could get a one and then a three, right? So what I'm asking for is how many different ways are there for me to collect all of these different groupings? And what we should be able to do if we are gonna end up multiplying is we should be able to draw a tree diagram where we have all of our outcomes, in this case, one all the way through six. Now, the second possibility is going to depend on what the first one was. So we know that if we got a one on the first die roll, we could get a one through a six on the second die roll. And, and in this way, our tree diagram would expand because what we're doing is we're trying to find all of the groupings. Like this would be the one, one outcome. And, and this one here would be the one, six outcome. And we're looking at, in this case, pairings. And that's no different than if we were to do a, a third time. Now, in some cases, repetition may be allowed and repetition may not be allowed, also known as replacement. So there's, different ways we approach this, this multiplication principle, depending on whether we have replacement and order. Okay, so let's say, yes, we do have replacement and order is of replacement or, or uh, is of importance. Or uh, we, we, we have no replacement, but we have non-overlapping choices. So I'll, I'll, I'll describe what that means in just a second here. So if we roll a die three times, well, we know that, that we, we can just set up a tree like this with just one more set of branches for 111, 112, 113, and so on. So we are grouping, and we can look at the number of possibilities for the first roll, for the second roll, for the third roll, and, and multiply those together because we could think about this as we have six branches, each of which have six branches, each of which have six branches, and that becomes a multiplication problem. So this is this is six to the third. I'll just go ahead and leave it like that. So that's how many different possibilities there are. Okay, now we could also have a situation where suppose we have no replacement, but there are non-overlapping choices. In other words, I'm, I'm gonna pick one shirt out of four, I'm gonna pick a pair of pants out of three that I own, and I'm gonna pick a pair of socks that I have out of two. So we are still grouping because we're going to take one shirt with one pair of pants with one pair of socks, and we could just label our shirts as shirts one through four. And then if I wear shirt one, I could wear pants one, two, or three. And if I wear shirt one, pants one, I could have socks one or two. And we can already see that this is going to be, this is going to be four choices for the, the shirt. Each of those possibilities, each of those branches will have three additional branches emerging out of it, one for each of those three pairs of pants. And then we could pick any of those two pair of socks. So all 12 of these choices will then get paired with two different pairs of socks. And notice that we can't wear a shirt twice, but there is no replacement but they're non-overlapping choices. So what we're selecting from is shirts and then from pants and then from, from socks. But the goal here is that I could draw a tree diagram if I wanted to, and we are multiplying because each branch produces more branches off to the right. So 
each of these four produces three branches, each of which produces two branches, and there's our problem four times three times two, or, or 24 possible wardrobe choices. Okay, the next situation is suppose we have no replacement. And if you have no replacement, now we're talking combinations and permutations. The combinations and permutations would be our reduction of choices here. Okay, but now it depends on whether we care about the order in which those items are selected or not. So if we hire a manager, secretary, and customer service rep out of, out of 10 people, then we could agree that the first choice, the second choice, and the third choice is of importance. So this could be Sally, Joe, and uh, Tiffany, or it could be Joe, Sally, and, and Tiffany, right? And so that's a different outcome because they're going to be assigned different roles. So we can view this as, well, we have 10 people to fill the job of, of manager multiplied by, well, now there are only nine choices for the secretary multiplied by, well, now there are only eight choices for the customer service rep. And in this sense, we're considering all different orderings because in our 10 branches, we could have you know, all 10 people here. So person one, person two, all the way down to person 10. Here, if person one is selected for manager, we could still have person one, person two, all the way to person 10 for secretary. And then, oh, I'm sorry, we can't, we can't have person one here. We can only have persons two through 10 because person one has been eliminated. So now there are only nine branches coming off of that. Uh, but then we could also have, if person two is selected, only persons three through 10 or eight different possibilities for that third person. Now, one thing we have to realize here is one, two, three is one possible set of outcomes that we'll see here, but also somewhere in this rung, we'll have a two, a one, and a three, right? And so that 10 times nine times eight is accounting for all these different variations of one, two, three, two, one, three, three, one, two, three, two, one, and so on. So we have 10 times nine times eight or 720 different ways we could, we could fill these roles. Now, that's the same thing as writing 10 factorial over and then canceling out the 7 factorial, which is, again, still 10 times 9 times 8. But we have a faster way to do this, and uh, that is by taking in our calculator or Desmos or whatever device we want. We want to know the number of permutations of from 10 items selecting 3 without replacement order matters. This is a quick button push, and this will give us 720. We don't usually write out all the algebra, all the, the arithmetic that takes place, because sometimes it could be cumbersome if you have, let's say, you have 17 different positions you're trying to fill with 100 people, then it would be a lot of multiplications, and uh, we, we want to make our lives as easy as possible. Now, suppose there's no order. We just want to hire three customer service reps. Well, again, notice that we're still pairing, right? We're looking at how many collections of three people are there. But now we want to treat one, two, three, two, one, three, three, one, two, three, two, one, et cetera, as being all the same. So from that 720, we need to divide out all the rearrangements of the same three objects. Well, how many rearrangements are there of the same three objects? Well, there's one, two, three, then there's one, three, two, and you could do two, one, three, two, three, one. You could do three, one, two, three, two, one. Well, there's six of them. And the way you can calculate this, it's three times two times one. Uh, well, maybe I shouldn't have picked one, two, three here, but let's say this was ABC and then ACB, BAC, BCA, CAB, CBA. Then we know there's going to be three times two times one possibilities for, for that. So we'll divide that by three times two times one. Well, that's the same thing as taking the number of permutations, dividing out the number of ways to take three items and rearrange them. And so this is what we call the number of combinations that we can create. Different groupings, no replacement, order is not of importance, combination of 10 items, select three of them. There's the nutshell way that we could do these computations.
let's take a look at a, just a couple of really common errors and let's see how why there these are errors and how we can fix them so let's say you have nine applicants for a customer service job there five female four male you hire four applicants in how many ways can you fill the three jobs with two females and two male okay well the common approach to this is just to take well there's five times four there's 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 20 different ways we could hire two females and then there's four times three which is 12 ways we could hire the males and then we want to look at all the groupings of female uh, pair them with all the groupings of male so for example you know the five times four one of those would be female one and female two and then we want to look at that being paired with male one male two being selected and then male one male three and so on right we want to do all these different pairings but here's the issue we know that five times four uh, that that is counting all of the order differences right that's as if I said I have if I just look at the females I could have female one female two female three female four and female five and then if female one is selected I could have female two female three female four female five and I'm not gonna write these other ones out but it's gonna be five times four this is gonna have four branches right here then we'll have four branches four branches four branches four branches five times four is 20 but keep in mind we'll have female one female two and we'll have female two female one and since they're the same position we don't want to just think about filling slots we want to first of all ask the question okay how can I select two females without replacing them I can't select the same female twice and order doesn't matter well that's specifically what a combination is, is used for from the five females count the number of ways I could group two of them together so this is just for groupings of two female and then let's look count the number of groupings of two males from the four males that, that are in the in the pool groupings of two male and now I want to multiply them together because I want to look at every grouping of two females with every grouping of two males and so combination five comma two times combination four comma two will, will give me that answer and that's going to be smaller because keep in mind that combinations remove the order so this will actually end up being 10 uh, because every pair of people has two different ways to arrange them and same thing for four combination two that's going to be 12 divided by two which is six so there are actually only 60 ways but this proposes that there are 20 times 12 which would be I think 240 different ways so that's one common error and here's another one how many rearrangements are there for the letters in the word refreshed well since I count the number of letters and there's one two three four five six seven eight nine um, I might just think well there are nine uh, there are nine slots to fill with letters there's nine possibilities for the first letter then there's I've removed that one letter then there's only eight possibilities and then pair it with seven possibilities pair it with six possibilities but the issue with this is this would work if the letters were distinct but the letters are not all distinct in fact if I look at R there are times two of those there's an R here and an R here and if I look at E's I have three E's E E E and then I have one F and I have an S and an H and a D S H D and if you count those up it's five plus plus four is still nine letters but the problem is that uh, I will end up with order differences between the same letter so this is actually counting if R was here and R was here and somewhere else in that count those same two R's are just switched in order but are double counted right so this is if we think about this as R1 and R2 they're the same letter 
then this is actually, this multiplication is actually counting those R's, but just in reverse order, yet it's still exactly the same arrangement of letters. So the way to think about problems like this, where you, you may have replicates or you may have groupings that are the same, is to think, okay, I have nine slots, but instead of, but instead of filling a slot with a letter, let's think about, first of all, picking slots with which to fill with the same letter. So if I think about where I can place my R, okay, I can place my R in any one of these, my two R's in any one of these two slots. So for example, here's one way I could place those R's. Okay, so what I'm gonna ask is, how many different ways are there for me to pick two slots out of nine? Order doesn't matter, right? Because those are the same, the same two letters are going into those two slots. And so this allows me to just count the number of ways that I could place my two R's. Place two R's into two slots. Now what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna say, well, it doesn't matter what order I do these in, but I'm gonna just go with E. There, how many different ways can I place E's into the remaining slots. Well, what I'm asking for is from the, now I only have seven remaining slots, how many different ways can I choose three of them and put my E's in there? So place two E's. Now I have one F, so I could put that F there, for example. This is Again, the number of ways from the remaining six slots, uh, sorry, not six slots, four slots left. Pick one of them and put your, put your F in there. And you can kind of see where, where this is headed now. I have an S, I could put the S here. So from the remaining three slots, pick one to put the S in. And then pick one slot, say there, out of the remaining two, put your H in that slot. And lastly, well, there's only one slot left. So there's only one way I could, I could place that D if I do it in this order. Now, it doesn't matter what order you consider the letters and you'll get the same answer, but we want to end up multiplying these together because I want to pair every way in which I could place two R's with every way in which I could place two E's. So imagine that this keeps track of where your two R's go. Maybe it goes in the first slot and the second slot Maybe it goes into the first slot and the third slot, and so on. And this then keeps track of where those two E's go from the remaining slots that, sorry, this is three E's, where those three E's go from the remaining seven slots. And I'm trying to pair all of these different possibilities. So this is going to be groupings of, I'm counting the number of ways I can group things, in this case, pairs or triples or singles of, of numbers. Okay, lastly, how do we know when to add outcomes? Well, whenever we are counting things that are non-overlapping uh, or non-groupable. So here's a simple example. And again, intuition goes a long way here. Let's say I have three baseball caps or three baseball hats and two and four cowboy hats. How many choices for head apparel do I have today? Well, I'm not gonna multiply them because if I multiplied them, then that suggests that I would wear a base, one of three baseball caps and that I would wear one of four cowboy hats, and that just doesn't make a lot of sense, right? So in this case, they're non-groupable, because what I'm gonna do is wear one of these seven hats. So there are actually only three plus four equals seven choices that I can make. Another example would be, let's say there are 10 stores I wanna visit this week. Today I will either visit three of them or four of them. How many options do I have for visiting these stores today? Well, I, I clearly can't visit three of them and four of them. I can only do only do one of these two possible things. Well, how many ways are there for me to visit three of the stores? Okay, well, that's, that's the same as asking without replacement, right? I'm assuming I'm not going to go to the same store twice. From the 10 store, pick three of them. How many different ways can I pick three stores? Then I have... Uh, or I could, from those 10 stores, pick four of them. And remember, this is gonna constitute like store one, two, three, store one, two, four. This over here is not ordered triples, this will be ordered quadruples, if you will, 
one, two, three, four, one, two, three, five, etc. So I could do this, or I could do this, or I could do this, but you can see that they're non-overlapping. They share some elements in common, but this is four stores, this is three stores, so it makes sense to add these together. So I hope this has been kind of, kind of a helpful recap, a way to take all these concepts and, and make them more clear in our minds.